بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Imam Zay Shakir and I'm coming, you, coming to you in the aftermath of what has been described as a failed bomb plot at Times Square in New York City uh, These are very tense and challenging times for a lot of Muslims Unfortunately, some Muslims are confused, and a, a small minority of those who are confused are, are vacillating and wondering if indeed it is a proper course of action to target uh, innocent civilians in these Western lands or here in the United States because they look at all of the innocent Muslims that are being killed in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Palestine, in Somalia, and other places. And a lot of those directly or indirectly due to the policies of the United States. In response to that dilemma, if you will, I want to emphasize to anyone, and there might be a small minority of Muslims, young or old, who are confused in that regard, that we have to be a community that is uncompromising and upholding the sanctity of innocent life. We have to be a community that is uncompromising in respecting the principle of civilian immunity. This is a duty we have. Allah Ta'ala in the Qur'an mentions من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا ولقد جاءتهم رسولنا بالبينات ثم إن كثيرا منهم ثم إن كثيرا منهم بعد ذلك في الأرض لمسبحون So Allah Ta'ala mentions Almighty God mentions that because of the murder committed by the elder son of Adam against his brother, we ordain for the children of Israel that anyone who kills an innocent life uh, for other uh, or takes a life, and referring to an innocent life, for other than retribution for murder or spreading a murderous sedition in the earth, it's as if they've killed all of humanity. And whoever saves an innocent life, it's as if they've saved all of humanity. And we've sent our messengers with clear proofs. Then, even after that, you see many of them going through the land, continuing to transgress by continuing to murder innocent people. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is the foundation of our approach in this regard. Allah Ta'ala is reminding us that a single life and the, the gravity of taking a single innocent life is like massacring all of humanity. That's the weightiness of that crime. And saving a life is like saving all of humanity. We have a responsibility to hold on to this principle because it's a slippery slope. If you look at Western history, once it was decided that civilians, civilian infrastructure, could, could be bombed and destroyed, it was a very short path from 1930 to 1945 and the atomic bomb. A very short path. We have to be absolutely uncompromising in this regard. We should understand, speaking of the, the atrocities committed by Western powers during the two world wars and before that, that this idea of total war, is none of our business. Our Prophet وسلم, remind us, reminded us من حسن إسلام المرئي تركه ما لا يعنيه from a person's Islam being good is leaving that which doesn't concern him or her. Anything amongst those things that don't concern us are those things that have no sanctioning in, our, in the sources of our religion. And this idea of indiscriminately killing people, targeting civilians, removing... Uh, uh, the immunity from them and the protection from them, this has nothing to do with Islam, brothers and sisters. This idea of total war, if you look at ancient history, the Peloponnesian War that's been uh, documented by Thulycides, it's, it was involved total warfare in some of its manifestation. Whole populations were wiped out or cast into slavery. Entire societies were mobilized for warfare. 
This is not from Islam. If you look at the Middle Ages, the Mongol hordes, when they swept across Asia and left uh, burned cities and villages and millions of dead people in their wake, this isn't something that we find in Islamic history. When you study the idea of total war, Islam does not come up as an example. So this has nothing to do with us and we should make sure that it continues to have nothing to do to, uh, with us. That as human beings have begun to work and struggle to move beyond the idea of war as a norm and have gotten into a situation where war is an anomaly, have begun to struggle to reaffirm the uh, protective status that's afforded to innocent civilians and non-combatants. Muslims should not be the people whose actions are used as a justification to undo that progress. We should be pro people that are working to make further progress in this regard. This is what our religion is calling us to. As we mentioned, there are, there's a lot of uh, tension, there's a lot of bitterness, there's a lot of frustration, there's even hatred in some people's par uh, hearts for the United States or for Western powers. The Qur'an is a book that deals with life and the realities that confront us as we move down the road of life. And it deals with this reality, the reality of actions uh, 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 affecting us so deeply that we're moved to hatred. We're human beings, but what does it counsel us? Uh, that, oh, you believers, don't allow your hatred of a people move you to be unjust, be just that is closer to piety. And we are ordered to be pious people. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَكُونُوا مَا الصَّادِقِينَ Oh you believers, be pious, mindful of Allah, and keep yourself with the, with the, tru the truthful people. So it's closer to taqwa, to not allow that hatred, not allow that bitterness, not allow that frustration, to move one to be unjust. Rather, focus one's energy and work to educate people. Work to show people through your deeds and your example the, the power of true morality, the power of forgiveness, the power of taking the high road. Well, uh, as Allah Ta'ala reminds us, وَلَا تَسْتَعْبُ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا سَيْئَةُ إِدْفَعَ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنُهُ عَدَاوَةُ كَأَنُّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ That not equal are good and uh, not equal are, are good and evil. So it's evil what's going on in the Muslim world. And a lot of that is not laid at the steps of the United States. There are Muslims who are killing Muslims. There are Muslims who are placing bombs in masjids and marketplaces and slaughtering innocent, unsuspected Muslims. There are Muslims doing these crimes just as the bombs and the hellfire rockets are, are destroying innocent Muslim lives uh, in various places. So our responsibility is not to respond to that evil, the evil of the hellfire rockets and the evil of the B-52s and the evils of uh, being afflicted from the F-111s or the B-2 stealth bombers, but to respond with goodness, to respond with principle, to respond with conviction, to respond with educating and guiding people who have been misguided. To have the courage to knock on our neighbor's door and to educate them about our religion. To show them through our example the good of this religion so that their hearts will be affected in a positive way as the, as the verse reminds us. The one between whom you and he there was great en enmity becomes as it were a trusted friend by the power of Allah. Never despair of the power of Allah to affect good to bring about good as long as we do the thing that's right, just, principled, and ethical. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.